Hi, let's review some basics about how to read social cues. So the subject of social cues is huge. There are full books written on how to read social cues. So we're just going to touch on some of the basics to kind of help get you started in terms of understanding how to read somebody when you're having a conversation with them. So the first thing is to talk a little bit about eye contact. So a lot of people have heard a lot about eye contact. It's really important to look somebody in the eye when you're talking to them. Um, but when you have social difficulties, and a lot of people in our center, they have a hard time with eye contact. It just feels really uncomfortable. And so it's something that if you forced it with them, it might look really awkward if they try to have eye contact. So I, I would say maybe if it, that's just too difficult for you, and maybe just work your way up to having eye contact, you might want to look at kind of the area around the eyes. So sometimes like that the eyebrows, ears or this, this part of your face of someone's face so that you're looking at them but you're not necessarily making eye contact because eye contact done wrong can look really strange and we don't want that to happen we don't want to force people to do things that they find really uncomfortable the other thing is if you're talking to somebody watch for how fidgety they are i mean there are certainly people who just are fidgety that's true but you want to see if they're starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable or maybe the conversation's gone on too long and they're starting to look a little bit bored and what might that look like well they might be looking away they might look beyond you they might look at their watch um, they might just start fidgeting with stuff like maybe start playing with their backpack or their purse or something, or maybe they pick up their cell phone. Um, by the way, never talk to somebody while you're looking at your cell phone. <laughs> that's not friendly. Um, but maybe that's what they're doing is to show that they're, they're kind of done with the conversation. So you just want to watch for things like that. If somebody's starting to look bored with what you're saying and make sure that it's an interactive conversation. Some people tend to do more of what's called like a monologue versus a dialogue. Well, monologue meaning you're pretty much just talking at someone and it's not really where they're talking back to you and you're having a kind of that back and forth conversation. So if you tend to do that, you might want to just kind of check yourself a little bit and make sure that that conversation is going both ways and that the person is engaged in what you're saying and it's reciprocal in that way. Another way to engage when you're having a conversation some, with somebody in terms of your body language or your social cues is to lean forward, nod your head, maybe have a, a pleasant look on your face. Um, some people might have kind of a grumpy or bored looking look on their face kind of on a, on a regular basis. So you might have to kind of work a little bit to look a little bit friendlier, a little bit happier, a little more interested. We have to watch what our facial expression is conveying to the other person you're talking to just to make sure that we're not looking bored, that we're looking engaged. We want to look that way even if we're not particularly interested in the topic that they're talking about. So sometimes people talk to us about things that they find really exciting or interesting that's going on in their lives and we have to fake it a little bit and just kind of show that we're interested even though we might not be particularly but that's what we do for friends. We want to make sure that we're engaged in that conversation in that way. In terms of your actual body and how you present your body to someone, the first thing I would say is to make sure your body is near other people. So a lot of times what happens, at least in our center, is somebody who's maybe shy, feeling a little bit awkward, they might pull themselves a good 20 feet away from everybody else like they might be on the other side of the room. And it's not that they're unfriendly, they're just uncomfortable. They're probably anxious. And so the thought of going over to a crowd of people feels really uncomfortable. So they, they don't. But what they could be conveying by doing that is that maybe the crowd might think, oh, you, they don't want to be friends with us. Look, at they're over there by themselves, even though that's not their intent at all. But that could be the message that they're, they're giving. So what we suggest is like if you're going to go over, don't feel like you have need to make a bunch of conversation when you join a group. You can go and just listen for, for a bit. You can make a little comment, um, just being part of them and, you know, nodding or agreeing, maybe laughing if someone tells a joke that that makes you still part of the group without really adding to the conversation in any giant way. So that's a one way just to make sure you're there, you're present, you're engaged, you're listening, you're nodding, you're smiling, you're laughing if someone's joking so that you are part of that, that group conversation. The other thing I would say in terms of your, your overall body language is to make sure that your your front is facing somebody else when they're talking. So a lot of times what will happen is kids at our center are teens or young adults even, when they're talking to us, when they might even ask a question and then they walk away. So sometimes they might walk away during a conversation. And if that's the case, you really need to kind of be mindful of that and make sure that you're staying physically there with your body facing that person. Just watch where your feet are, that your feet are facing the person that you're talking to so that they can see you're engaged in that. Now, if you're watching something together, so let's say you're watching a sporting event or even something smaller than that, like their air hockey game going on, and you're next to somebody, 
then in that situation, you can talk to somebody just by turning your head and talking to them without turning your full body to them. In, ca in that situation, you would not want to have your full body turned toward them. You'd want you can talk to somebody more sideways because you're both watching something unfold in terms of like an air hockey game or something. And that's totally fine to do it that way as long as you're you're looking occasionally over at the person you're talking to. The other thing I would talk about is just groups. So let's say you walk over to a group of people who are talking and watch for how the, the people who you're closest to in that group react to your appro approaching them. So for example, if you approach a group of people and maybe they, they close the circle, either they step closer to the person next to them, or they take that shoulder and they just turn it in like, like they don't want you there, watch for that. And if that happens, then you're probably not welcome to join that conversation at that particular time. It doesn't necessarily mean that they dislike you. It could be that they're talking about something that's a little bit more private that they don't want to share to a greater audience, but just watch for that that shoulder closing or that space closing so that you don't join a group of people where you're not welcome. Um, on the same token, let's say you're talking with a group of people and someone comes over, the way to let them in is to just open that back up, like move your shoulder over, allow some space and let that person kind of enter into that group. Or you could just let the person come in and then help them to join in the conversation. So you could say, hey, we were all just talking about what amusement parks we might go to this summer. And that way you're letting the person know that that's the topic you guys are all talking about. And then they're, you first of all, you let them in, you've welcomed them into the group, you've clued them into what you're talking about. And now that person is set up very well to be able to contribute to the conversation and feel like a member of the group. And that's a really great way to kind of use your body to welcome somebody into a group of people. So I hope you found these tips useful. If you did, please hit the like button, hit subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot more videos on how to help children, teens, and young adults improve their social lives and leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. If you have somebody in your family or maybe yourself who is interested in learning more about how to do better socially, give us a call. You can text or call the number below, or you could email us at info at simplysocialkids.com. We do offer free trials so we can just have a conversation, find out what your social needs are and then set up a free trial and see if it's right for you.